world building where the people live on this island and they venture down into the Welcome to This Week at Four Horsemen, where I am Ryan O'Loughlin, and this is Ron Davis. And? <laughs> That's it? That's all you got. I threw you for one hell of a loop. <sighs> Did not see that one coming at <laughs> Did all. Did not see that one. <laughs> that would have been a good one for the year. Completely <laughs> and utterly unexpected. I was really excited. So, excited. Ron. Yes, Ryan. What is This Week at Four Horsemen? <laughs> this Week at Four Horsemen is our weekly show to discuss uh, some events, some sales promotions, other nerdy stuff happening in and around the store. Yes, and we're starting every ish issue. Well, issue. Actually, this we do issue. call them issues. Issue. We're starting every episode with a giveaway. Yep. And we have a $50 gift card that is past due. We want to thank everyone thank who uh, did our survey. We got lots of great info from that. We're going to hopefully improve your experience and our experience. Thank you for taking our survey. So, the Big lucky deep. winner. Mine's in the bottom. Let's crinkle up. Ron Davis. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one didn't actually say Ron Davis. Let's. Who won? Who actually won? Mr. Justy O'Houlihan. O'Houlihan? O'Houlihan. Do you know him? I don't know a Justy I don't know a Justy O'Houlihan, but if you are Justy O'Houlihan, please come and claim your $50 gift card, and thanks for watching. Thank you, Justy. All right, let's jump into comics. Yay! What do we got this week? Look at that. We're talking more about Batman Sins of Our Father. Uh, this is issue two that's coming out tomorrow. We mentioned this when issue one came out, but I just want to reiterate this is based on the Telltale Batman video game series, and it is really cool. The Telltale games are super story-centric, and they are just perfect to be adapted into comic books. I cannot recommend this enough. Super cool. Nazis, Thomas Wayne. What? <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler! Now, Alex pointed out, uh, that is Deadshot, and he is missing not once, but like five different times shooting Yeah, Batman. that What is that's, that all about? That's a bit of a, a miscalculation. It looks cool, but... He's dead yeah. shot and he yeah. shouldn't be. He shouldn't well, be no, I guess he did like rip through his cape though, because his cape is all shredded. I mean, I guess you could say he fired a bunch of shots that hit his cape, but you know his cape is special material. Maybe and... he was aiming for his cape. Why would he do that? It's dead shot. He can aim for whatever he wants. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to Marvel, we have something I'm excited for. This, this is looks great. Weapon H issue one. If you don't know who Weapon H is, it's the latest project from Weapon X. It's a combination of the Hulk and Wolverine. Wow. Who would think that's a good idea? <laughs> Weapon X. And uh, this isn't a spoiler. It's part of the premise. He kills all of Weapon X. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in issue one, he fights the Wendigo. Do you know who the Wendigo is? Uh, I know of the Wendigo. Yeah. Yes. He's the big white dude. Yeah, he's the big white. He's a, he's a he's Wolverine a real, villain. Real he's angry. basically like a Canadian like Bigfoot abominable yeah. snowman yeah. mixed with the Hulk. 
Yeah. It's really cool. This book looks awesome. It looks amazing. It really does. How have we not mixed Wolverine with the Hulk so <laughs> far? Because <laughs> we're Marvel, and you know it's only been sixty years. And we you think they have just like a big bowl that like pull up two characters? All right, we're gonna mash these two together this uh, week. I think they have a dartboard. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We're gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right, moving on to Star Wars. We have the newest issue of Star Wars, which is number 45. Very good. We're deep in the Mon Cala Rebellion story that just started on the previous issue and is tying in with Darth Vader, even though they take place during different timelines. This is awesome. Super excited. Who's he talking to there? Wedge. Is that Wedge? I would imagine it's Wedge because okay. we're past where Biggs would be Oh, alive. okay. Yeah. That so. was my other guess, but if we're past that. And also, he... Uh, Wedge was in Rebels, and that kind of looks like the design they used for Wedge and Rebels. Uh, okay. The uh, the episode that they introduced Wedge and Rebels, I think, is called the Antilles e Extraction. He was an Imperial pilot that wanted to defect. Oh, okay. And uh, Sabine went in there and extracted him. <laughs> Took him out. Yeah, it's real <laughs> cool. Along with another <sighs> Rebel pilot. Don't spoil but it. But we will, we will talk about that yep. another time. Also, speaking of Rebel pilots... Poe Dameron number 25, uh, this, the, uh, the description of this book uses the words Force Awakens in oh, it. Yeah? We are coming close to the end. Yeah. So if you're not caught up with Poe Dameron, uh, now or never, people. <laughs> I watched a little bit of The Last Jedi uh, today. I watched all of The Last Jedi today. You're a champion. <laughs> do, you, do you notice that he actually tickles BB-8 at one point? He like tickles his sides. No, I did he not. He absolutely does. You watched the game. I did not know. I did not notice that. I did. I noticed a lot of things on this yeah. viewing that I missed there's, in the there's theaters. So much. Yeah, I, I want to watch. We need to watch like the director's commentary together. I was actually. Cool. I was actually thinking uh, one of our upcoming projects could be just us doing streaming a commentary of an entire <gasps> Star Wars movie. Nobody wants probably the last Jedi. So, but, but we'll it. do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Viewers, viewership is a tear one. <laughs> We're having fun. The heck yeah. with it. All right, speaking of having fun, we're moving on to our staff pick, which this time is me, and I'm doing our first anime staff pick, and this will not be the last. Okay, so <laughs> I just watched all of this thing in about three days. It's real short. It's called Made in Abyss. It's only 13 episodes. Uh, can you go ahead and roll us on to our next image, Alex? So basic premise. This takes place on an island, and in the center of the island is this massive chasm you can see the chasm there it's this crater that goes deep down into the earth and there's this attack on titan ish world building where the people live on this island and they venture down into the chasm as cave raiders and look for relics to sell to make money and that's how they earn their living but everything down there is super dangerous there's tons of monsters there's tons of uh natural difficulties a lot of people who go down there die but that's still like that's how they have chosen to live their lives. And the world building in this anime is so fantastic. Hmm. Uh, so the top is the island, and they just, like, that is down in the earth. Okay. Yes. And they oh, act, there's actually, like, a curse. Once you go so far down, you can't go back up. Because once you are inside of the chasm, any time that you ascend, you fall all prey to the curse. Now, it's, it's broken up into levels. And if you're at the top level and then you ascend, right. you get nauseous. And then huh. if you go down to the next level and you ascend, you get nauseous and you start bleeding. And it gets worse the and worse and worse the farther down you go to the point where if you go down so far, you can't go back up without dying. Wow. And this, the story revolves around these two little kids who are trying to get down to the bottom because one of the kids' mother is at the bottom and she sent up a letter to the top that she needs to come down there. Why don't you just send up a bunch of relics? They can buy their way to the bottom. <laughs> you you can't buy your way to the bottom. It's 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 a like the wild west of monsters down there. I I, I thought the first the first episodes couple episodes were a little slow, but the world building kept me watching. And as you get into the second half of it, it gets super dark and bad bad things happen to these little kids. That's really cool. I like it. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> bad things happen. Bad things. Uh, I'm in. It is free on Prime. You can watch oh. it on Prime right now. Cool. So check it out. I recommend it. Cool deal. So what do we got next? Uh, we have the Versus series. <laughs> we have Bender versus Beetlejuice. Shut up! Bender wins. <laughs> Bender took it. Yeah, he bent. 
He no, Beetlejuice took it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he bent Beetlejuice over his knee. Stop there. <laughs> Stop there. Beetlejuice is forty percent a loser. <laughs> Just forty percent. Just forty percent. But Bender is forty percent the see, winner. See, I I can't even see these two fighting. I really can't. I but, but, I can see Bender fighting just about anybody. Bam. Yeah, any human, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, what is, is Beetlejuice just a ghost or is he like a malevolent spirit? I mean, what is he actually? Yeah, and how or, or is he like a demon that can interact with spirits? What is Beetlejuice? Yeah, I, I don't that's never defined. I yeah, cuz I don't know. Yeah, he's he's Michael. This is the truest form of Michael Keaton. <laughs> that's his true form. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, who's coming up next? Uh this week we have Bam. <laughs> quality, quality <laughs> programming here at Four Horsemen Comics and Game. Bam. This week we have Dream versus Iceman. First, give it, hold on. Dream is not super well. Give us a little bit of an intro. Who, who is Dream? Dream is, uh, he's part of the same end series. He <laughs> is, he is the person that um, Lucifer turned to whenever Lucifer decided to take a little break and leave hell and, and tossed Dream the keys. That's devilish. That's very devilish. So, so that was dream, a hell of a bad pun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> worst. So Dream is uh, Dream's going to mop the floor with Iceman. What what are what are his powers? What is what what's he do? What's, he's just a very very bad person. He's just a bad person. <laughs> just, well, I think I think well, Bobby Drake is going to put him on ice. Oh no no yeah. I think this is going to be a cool match. Ever see Freddy Krueger? Yeah yeah of course. Is that kind of hung out in the dream world? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, he's I'll, the Lord of Dreams. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. going to send I'm going to send Bobby Drake like a 12 pack of Monster. He just yeah. won't go to sleep. <laughs> he's going to so, turn it. The... But see, that's just it. He's got to sleep eventually. Eventually, dream. Yeah, he can sleep vicious. after Dream is dead. No. Okay. So Dream's sort of a so, tunnel. <laughs> so Dream attacks people in in dreams. It's like Freddy Krueger. Is he? Uh, what? He's the Lord of Dreams. He's, so he can. He it's can, very he ambiguous. It. And so if you piss him off, one of the worst things he'll do for you is forever waking. Every time you wake up, you realize you're still in a dream, and each time you wake up, it's worse. It's I think worse. I might have. It's worse. worse and worse. I think I might have made dream mad. <laughs> <laughs> I've had endless nightmares the past many, couple weeks. How many times have we done this show? <laughs> fifty-seven. Is this fi- issue fifty-seven? I think so. I think so. so. Oh so maybe gosh. fifty-seven times ago, you really irritated me, <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> is Alex Dream? <laughs> the Lord of Dream. <laughs> All right. Well, we will. We will find out next week who the winner is. Make sure to go to our social medias and vote. Yep. Yes. Moving on. So last week we had uh, we had a Masters twenty five release event. There is our singles case. It was twelve blood moons. It was beauty. Yeah, we had all the blood moons ever. Uh, beautiful case. It was completely decimated two days later. <laughs> Crickets uh, and tumbleweed were left. <laughs> de- completely derailing the show. Did you know that we have two moons now? That NASA has discovered a second moon in orbit of Earth. What? Mm-hmm. It you're, was just you're announced. Making that up. No, it was just announced. It's a it's a mini moon. It was it's a super large asteroid that has fallen into our orbit. It's been in our orbit for about a hundred years, and they just found it. How do they just now sit? Where it must be far out. Yeah, it's far out. Okay, All but right. but it is within our. It's in orbiting Earth, so it's technically and it's big enough that's, to be considered a moon. That's kind of impressive. Yeah. So our monogamous relationship with the moon Ooh. has ended. Polyamorous nice. Earth. <laughs> Two moons. Free love and terror, baby. <laughs> that was maybe uh, our This is more the the Masters 25 uh, release event. Um, Some of my favorite people are in this picture. Also, yep. Troy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had a Dragon Ball event. Um, so we're doing Dragon Ball every week now as a yeah. part of our regular every series. Every Saturday at 2 p.m. Yep. Uh, the kids are having a lot of fun here. I uh, had some Warhammer, as always. Uh, a lot of Warhammer happening these days. Uh, this is one of the armies brought out by Shea. Absolutely amazing paint job. My pictures did it no justice. I took a thousand pictures and none of them. Yeah, were it's a shame good. you couldn't get a better picture. Oh, gosh. I is that a Quinjet? That is probably, well, it's two. So it's a Duo Jet? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I just watched the new Shield last night. No spoilers. Please. No spoilers. X yeah. dice. <gasps> Why would you do that? All right, moving on to this week's events. This is a calendar of all of our events for this week. We're going to go over details on a few of them, but if you need any, please go to facebook.com slash Comics and click on the event tab. Do take notice we are running Dragon Ball Super TCG Constructed Tournaments every Saturday at 2 p.m. Yep. 
And we are also doing a super fun Hero Clicks event this Wednesday at 6.45. As your normal $5 entry is a 1,000-point build in the Golden Age format. However, it has a Pacific Rim twist on it because Pacific Rim Uprising does yep. come out this week. At least one character on your force must have one of the following keywords. Armor. Right. Jaeger. Monster. Kaiju. Monster. Pan Pacific Defense Corps. That's pretty specific. <laughs> Robot, scientist, soldier, giant, or colossal damage. All right. So if I took a Sharpie and wrote Jaeger on the side of Professor X, <laughs> would that work? <laughs> no. I think that would just be Sorry, drunk, drunk Charles. <laughs> drunk Charles. Captain Morgan? No. Oh, 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 oh. We could, and then we could time to a firecracker, and he'd be a Jaeger bomb. <sighs> Yes, we have another th another thing. We have a 40k Shadespire game night. Uh, that is Thursday, six from close. Uh, I'm not sure who's running that. Is it? I'm not sure who's running it. Then why do you even bring that up? Because somebody's going to be running it. Yes, we. Will <laughs> it be will running. be run. We will. It, it will, will be, be run ran. into the ground, probably. <laughs> it is a free event, and what? is Shadespire. So, well, actually, <laughs> Shadespire is an action-packed combat game for two players. Build your warband, construct your deck, and defeat your rivals. Shadespire was once a city of wonder and magic. A mercantile metropolis whose rulers defied death to the fury of the Nagash. Nagash. The fury was made to manifest in something worse than destruction, drawing upon the mysterious power of the Shadeless... Shade glass. Shade glass. Shade glass. <laughs> they gave the city its power. Nagash, Nagash tore away the light and glory of Shadespire, leaving its twisted reflection of, it, of its former splendor. Those adventurers, foolish enough to set foot within its walls, are trapped with all hope seemingly lost. Yet, not all will accept this fate without a fight. Did you make that up? That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Just off the cuff. Very good. GW, I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> Hire me. Hire me. So. We also have the Magic the Gathering Dominaria pre-release. It's coming. Coming on April the 21st and 22nd. Yeah. We should have some promotions for that soon. Soon-ish. Soon-ish. Probably I, April 20th. No. Now, this is this is <laughs> this one of the huge. one of the biggest magic releases. Can I can I can I give a spoiler about our, our pre-release event? Sure. I mean uh, promote your events. Alright, so 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 the, the premise behind Dominaria is they're going back to where it all started, right? Yes. So, Dominaria is the plane where all of the original magic gathering sets take place. Alright. So we thought it'd be kind of neat to take uh, magic back to when it first started back in the what, mid 90s. So we're going to play without rules. So we're basically going to have a 90s themed release, <gasps> complete with Dunker. That'd be awesome! Awesome! Let's drink <laughs> some Tang. That's rad. Listen to In Sync. <laughs> there, uh, I can either confirm or not deny that there will be Wonder Balls present. <laughs> if oh, you talk, I wonder, wonder, <laughs> who I do my whoop? What's in a Wonder, wonder Ball? Ball? All right, yep. sorry. So, Could be Nestle chocolate or candy <laughs> shapes inside. All right, all right. Viewership is dropping. Fine. Yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, more details are coming, but we're, we're that's the angle that we're playing. We're gonna party like it's 1993. What's your favorite movie it's from 1993? Uh, Star Wars. That's, that's standard answer. All right. Well, uh, that's the only question I've ever heard to which Star Wars is not the correct answer. Oh, that is an incorrect answer then. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Tabletop Bay is also coming up April 28th. We are still looking for some volunteers. Um, we have a local game designer. Darius is going to be coming in to uh, demo his game. Uh, so come out, check that thing out. We uh, are still looking for demo uh, runners and volunteers. So if you yeah, interested, I've been uh, I've been placed in a Facebook group chat uh, with Mr. Spears, Mr. Ackerman, and the rest of the crew. Yep. And I'm sorry that I haven't been active in that, but they are blowing up my phone all the time. <laughs> Preparations are being made. It's like the North Pole 20 days before Christmas. Yep. They are going crazy for this. Yeah. Should uh, be great. Uh, we still, I, I still need some uh, members for my crew. So we are going to play Captain Sonar that night, and I'm going to try like the devil to get this thing streamed. I can grow up my Riker beard. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be my number one? I'll be number one. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. No, oh, yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta. Yeah, there you go. You gotta like hike up your leg. There I can't. I'm not. I'm not seven feet tall. Not I can't. Do, I can't do that. He is a big guy. He is a big guy. All right, let's move on to my favorite segment. 
And your favorite segment, just announced Disneyland After Dark is coming out with Star Wars Night and is going to start on the eve of Star Wars Day. So May this 4th. is May, May the 3rd, the eve yes. of Star Wars right. Day. Right. Uh, so what is it? It's basically Disney does these after hours uh, events and this one is going to be Star Wars themed. There's lots of cool stuff they're going to do. They're de debuting a new parade called March of the First Order, where Captain Phasma actually uh, marches a battalion of First Order stormtroopers through Tomorrowland. That would be so impressive. That would be the great, greatest. <sighs> uh, it's going to be the return of Hyperspace Mountain, which is the redesign of Space Mountain to be Star Wars themed. Super <sighs> cool. Uh, there's going to be oh. <laughs> exclusive after hours uh, access. There's going to be special entertainment. There's going to be character encounters. There's going to have people uh, walking around in costume. I assume they're probably going to have some special guests oh, yeah. too, but nothing's been announced. Uh, special theme and decor throughout out the park. Lots of great stuff. And of course, exclusive merchandise. <sighs> Gotta get some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go. Gotta, gotta do that. So... Get book your flights to Orlando. Yeah, yeah. I, it says yeah. Disneyland. Also to Anaheim. <laughs> Anaheim. <laughs> how how mad would somebody be if they went to Orlando? Four horsemen based on me. this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Send the cards and letters too. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, we are um, moving on to this weekend Ooh. movies. Go ahead. You know, Pacific Rim, I liked that movie. I really did. I really didn't. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, I went in expecting absolutely nothing. I just wanted to see giant robots, some punching out some dinosaurs, and I got a lot of Okay, them. so here's my thing. There's no story. You don't need to have a story with this. The story's real bad. You don't need a story. Uh, but uh, here, here's my thing. As I've grown up on mech. Right. Particularly Gundam, mm -hmm. and, and from Gundam, lots of other anime. And I actually have, like, high expectations for mech. That it, uh, it can be have a good story with real characters right. and character development, and that was not Pacific Rim. <laughs> uh, no. I'm I'm a little optimistic uh, for this one because you know it's possible that this one is a little better written. I'm also going in with lower expectations right. and John Boyega. Yeah, John Boyega. I mean, he now is he? Do you think he is the son of, of Idris Elba? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's confirmed. I would think. I, I think that'd be a. I just have really stood out in the first movie, as oh, yeah. he does in yeah. every movie he's oh, yeah. in. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you know, talking with some of the people that put together some of the Gundams and listening to some of their tales of you know, Gundam Wing and and all those. Oh, uh, it's yeah. the, the, there's a rich story behind all. Of Gundam it. is the Star Trek of Japan. Yeah, it, it's it's phenomenal. It's pretty cool. Yes. Pretty cool. It is. Speaking of cool. Cool. Countdown to Infinity Week We're Eleven. Man. Talk about going into a movie with like no expectations or low expectations, yeah. and then just home I, run. I almost didn't go see this movie. I, I had how, no interest to go see. This how movie. upset would you have been if you like saw it like on video? Oh, like, I'd be later so down mad. Right? Oh my I'd gosh, I'd be so mad. It was such a good movie. Yeah, it, it really is, and uh, I'm excited for. You now we're talking about yeah. uh, Infinity Wars, but the sequel to this, Ant Man and the Wasp, comes Oops. out in July. Yeah. It's, it looks so good. I know. <laughs> I, if you haven't seen this movie, just go, go see it. Just go see it. it, it, it grab it on video. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of fun. Um, I knew nothing about the character other than the little ant dude. Well, I, I was actually a, a big, a, a relatively big, big <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ant-Man fan just based on the Avengers right. uh, cartoon. Right. Yeah, but... That's Hank Pym. Mm -hmm. That's different. Yeah, this is this is Scott Lang, mm, right. different Ant Man. Hank Pym is in the movie. That's uh, Michael uh, Douglas. Yep. Good save. Son of Mr. Douglas. <laughs> Kirk <laughs> Douglas. Kirk Douglas. I knew that. One of the the greatest actors of his era in Hollywood. Uh, Romancing the Stone. Have you seen that one? No, no. He was in that one. What was Kirk Douglas in? Like. Every Everything. every every awesome western you haven't seen. Okay, and that's that why we're on that. that, that. <laughs> western, Got yes, it. gotcha. There 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 are some westerns out there that appeal to people who don't like westerns. I saw the Hateful Eight. Is that a western? Yeah, that was a good western. I mean, yeah, but that's that's Quentin Tarantino, so that's. It's not a western. I mean, no. it's it's set in the west. <laughs> okay, so it's it's like that's like calling Star Wars science fiction. It's in a science oh, fiction yeah. setting, but it's yeah. not really science fiction. Yeah. All right, Ant Man. But we digress. So it gives us Ant Man. Yes. <laughs> Tiny, mm -hmm. tiny expectations, big payoff. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> uh, moving on to the Four Horsemen mailbag, we have a viewer submitted question. What is your most embarrassing Star Wars story? Safe for work. Ooh. You go first. Let me think of one. I don't you, know that I have one. I I'm not embarrassed then, of Star Wars at then, all. <laughs> then why? I sent this to you earlier today so that you'd be prepared and come with one. Prepared. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> you got me with the opening. I got you with this one. We're even. No, I, I, I want it. I want you to take a week to think about this, and I want you right. to come back next right. week. I'll come back next week. All right, we're gonna... I, don't, I don't think I have anything embarrassing with Star Wars. Well, it doesn't oh, have. Actually, I do. Okay. Uh, I was at a Star Wars convention, mm -hmm. and <laughs> there was a guy that was like, uh, I can't remember who he was dressed up as. He was looking out of a window. And he just had like these bright white legs, like no suntan on his legs at all. So I went to take a picture, and he caught me taking a picture. That was, it was at a Star Wars convention. Does that not count? I don't know. <laughs> that, what was yours? Uh, okay, so when I was in high school, mm -hmm. uh, I had my two great loves were Star Wars and Star Wars and the lava game. <laughs> You're familiar <laughs> with the floor's lava. The floor's lava, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, I was, at, when I was, I guess I was 16. <laughs> the, this, the floor still lava. Gotcha. In my, in my bedroom, <laughs> playing the floor is lava by myself <laughs> with a lightsaber, acting out the, the Mustafar scene. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where <laughs> I'm Anakin and I'm I'm standing uh, on the st my my room was in the basement. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and I'm standing on the stairwell that's in the doorway of my room, and I have a couch that's about three foot away. Three well, it was a futon. Yeah. Uh, that's about three feet away, and I, you I'm Anakin. Totally make that. <laughs> you could totally make that. I jump, and I land on the arm of the couch and slip, and bust my leg off the couch, uh, to the point where my mother had to take me to the hospital. <laughs> so yeah. Nice. Good. Yeah. That one beats mine. <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was the chosen one. <laughs> you did not have the high ground, clearly. <laughs> God. All right, uh, moving on to Did You Know Four Horsemen. Let, let's re highlight that to blue. Blue? Blue. I'm blue? Yeah. All right. So, so <laughs> if you come in the shop, if you're looking to learn how to play a game, we always try to, to help anybody learn how to play a game Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh!, Magic, whatever. Uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast actually gives us these really cool little decks called Welcome Decks. Uh, you come in, ask any staff member, say, hey, what is this magic thing I'm hearing so many, so many people talk about? We will pull one of these out, teach you how to play, and you can take the deck with you when it's gone. It's a little two-player deck. These these are made by Wizards of the Coast, and they send them to us to hand out for free. Yep. Free free magic cards, free demo, as long as you know we're not solo staffed with a, a line out people. the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> teach me. Yes. Come and learn <laughs> the magics. Yes. Pick a color. Green is the best. Black and red. Yes. And then we also have a sale this week. <laughs> Our sale is going to be 10% off of Star Wars Legion. Star Wars what Legion. Is Star Wars Legion. Star Wars Legion. It is a new game. Uh, we're going to have it this week coming up. We have actually a demo copy here in the shop if you want to learn how to play that. Come on in and learn how to play. Speaking of demos, uh, Star Wars game, imagine Warhammer. So we've got the little figures, mm -hmm. Star Wars themed. Um, mm -hmm. Very skirmish based, very uh, troop movement y kind of things. It's really cool. The miniatures are fantastic. Uh, we have ATSTs. It's good. Scout Walkers. Scout Walkers. Chicken Walkers. I, know, I'm, I, am, I am just so obsessed with the Gorilla Walkers. Like, they are, they are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that probably sounded really good on the microphone. <laughs> probably, probably didn't. Sorry, Alex. Yeah. Come in. Check out Star Wars Legion. Yep, 10% uh, off. All right, we're moving on to our closer, but stick around for the post credit scene. This one's a doozy. Please like us at facebook.com slash 4 Comics. Follow us on Instagram at 4 Comics. Uh, watch all of our content at youtube.com slash C slash 4 Comics Gaming. Follow us uh, on Twitter at the number 4 Horseman Comics. Watch all of our streaming content at twitch.tv slash 4 Comics. And shop our TCG inventory at shop.4horsemancomics.com. Com. All right, we uh, I I had to make some executive decisions in terms of our dice rolling uh our, our game. Okay. So we were supposed to do a scene from Glory, the which is a phenomenal Civil War movie. If you haven't seen it, Matthew Broderick, Morgan Freeman, Denzel Washington, Carrie Elwes, phenomenal cast, great movie. Edward Zick is a wonderful director. Highly recommend it. Uh, 
there's not really any scene in that movie that is appropriate or would make sense to do <laughs> on this show. Okay. But I recommend every one of you go and see that movie. Uh, so then I, I rolled the dice, and we had uh, Devin Boyce's choice from Pokemon, the first movie, where uh, Ash becomes petrified. And... Uh, can't do that. <laughs> see, I, I'm not I, emotionally ready for that. I remember that scene differently than from when I was a kid than what it actually was. What I remember from that scene is, if you're not familiar with the movie, it has to do with Mewtwo, who's like this mm. cyber Pokemon. And uh, there's this, this fight between Mew and Mewtwo where they fire these psychic energy blasts at each other. And what I remember from when I was a kid is that they're like, they shoot it at Pikachu and Ash like runs and shoves Pikachu out of the way and then it gets blasted and Takes petrified. Yeah, that's not what happens. I watched it today. They, Mew and Mewtwo shoot at each other and then Ash goes, stop fighting and jumps in the middle and just gets Good job, Ash. blasted for no reason. <laughs> so we're not gonna Way do to that because Ash Ketchum uh, is a dummy. Yeah. We're Way going to, go, to we're going to do uh, a monologue or a duo log yep. or a trifecta log uh, from the true heroes of the Pokemon anime. He's shaking his head. Team Rocket. <sighs> I don't have this committed to memory, so. All right. Prepare for trouble. Make it double. To protect our world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse. James. Team Rocket, blast off at the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Alex, say the line. No. Alex, come on, just say the line. Say it. Oh, for crying out loud. Meowth. That's right. God. You got him to say it. Meowth. Meowth. God. I love you guys. <laughs>